Good morning and welcome to Vivi 101. We're going to go ahead and begin the webinar, which should last approximately 45 minutes. All attendees will be muted upon entry, um, and that's just to reduce any background noise. But we certainly encourage you to participate in the session by placing any questions or comments in the chat panel or the Q&A panel. We'll be sure to pause periodically to address any questions or comments that come in. My name is Katherine Vaughn, and I am a former classroom teacher and adjunct instructor, instructor from the College of, uh, excuse me, from Charleston, South Carolina. Um, I went to the College of Charleston, and I was an instructor at the other orange, uh, Clemson University. I realize that's a, a different orange from UTC. Um, I have spent the past 14 years working in the ed tech industry, providing professional development, and really just helping educators integrate technology into the classroom. Um, my passion is very simple. I just want to make things a little bit easier for educators and students. And so hopefully you'll see how Vivi could do that um, in your own classroom. Joining me is my coworker, Russ Reynolds. Uh, Russ is actually going to monitor the chat throughout the session. So um, again, if you have questions, drop them in the chat or Q&A. Um, Russ will keep an eye out for it, but I'll also pause periodically to address um, anything that comes in uh, with the whole group. All right, so let's talk about Vivi. Um, the Vivi solution is actually uh, pretty simple. It consists of three main parts. The first part of the Vivi solution is a little blue box. And I have a Vivi box right here. It's about the size of a cell phone, just a little bit thicker. And essentially, this little blue box is plugged into a display within a classroom. So that display could be a projector, a television, a flat panel, um, any sort of uh, display that, that you have in the classroom. Today, I have my Vivi plugged into a desktop monitor. So um, I'm going to take the role of an educator throughout much of the presentation so you can see what it might look like in a real classroom. And I'm going to use my desktop monitor as uh, my classroom display. Once the Vivi is installed in the classroom, it's really out of sight, out of mind. So as an instructor, you're not going to need to worry about the little blue box. Um, but this is what makes uh, Vivi tick. So that is important to note. The next part of the Vivi solution is Vivi Central. And Vivi Central is our cloud-based administration portal. Uh, generally, it's where the IT side of the house will manage all of the Vivi boxes. Um, that's well where they're, they will manage the users. Um, that's where they will send over-the-air updates. Uh, that's where they'll give the Vivi boxes names. Um, Generally speaking, uh, from a classroom perspective, instructors won't need to really worry about Vivi Central um, outside of just a couple of, of items that I will show you today. And last but not least is the Vivi app. And the Vivi app is the interface that um, instructors and students will use to interact with Vivi in the classroom. Um, so this is really the interface that uh, students and teachers use. So that's where we're going to spend the majority of our time today is taking a closer look at the Vivi app and how you as an instructor and your students would use the Vivi app to engage in the classroom. So our goal today, uh, we call this Vivi 101. So we're going to go through the basics of Vivi um, so you can successfully use Vivi to engage your students. Um, using the technologies in the classroom. Um, and that would be your, your device, so your, um, whether it's a laptop or um, a tablet um, or even a phone. Vivi is device agnostic, so we work with any sort of technologies that you have, any sort of operating system that you have. So that includes Windows, Mac, um, iOS, Linux, Android, and Chrome. I knew I was missing one there. Um, that would also include the student devices and then any display you have in your classroom. Now, um, first of all, I want to thank you all. Um, anyone who is in education right now has had an interesting past few months. So first of all, I just want to stop and thank you for all of the um, adjusting that you've had to do in recent months. 
to make sure that learning um, continued. And um, we all know that uh, the future is also uncertain. So um, those adjustments may be made moving forward. That being said, um, I will address how Vivi can be used in a variety of learning situations, whether that's remote learning, um, a socially distanced class, which, which could be that you have some students in a classroom with you and some students in another classroom next door. Um, so we can kind of accommodate that situation or a hybrid learning situation where some students are physically in class and some students are um, remoting into the class. So I will address these throughout um, the session because we can accommodate for those different learning situations. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. And we're going to start with the Vivi app. And we're going to start from signing on, and then we'll just go straight down the different tools in the Vivi app. So the first thing you will need to do is have the Vivi app. And um, it can be pushed out to devices, but you can also go to get Vivi, uh, get .vivi .io, and it'll take you directly there to, it'll actually automatically download the Vivi app when you go to get.vivi.io. It actually automatically recognizes your operating system and downloads it. Um, so you can see that it's downloading for my Windows 10 device, which I'm coming to you from today. So get.vivi.io, and that will allow you to get the Vivi app. Once you have the Vivi app, you will need to sign on. So I'm going to actually log out so you can see this process from start to finish. So this is very similar for both students and teachers. So one thing you will have to do when you first log on is you will need to enter the name of your organization. For you, that's going to be the University of Tennessee. Chattanooga. So that's just joining your organization. Um, I am not on campus, um, so I'm going to join my um, demo account. So Vivi Schools Southeast School. There. Why can't I find my Um, all right, interesting. I can't seem to find my organization. Well, that's interesting. All right, Vivi Charleston. There we go. Vivi School Southeast. There it goes. Um, I'm coming to you from Charleston, South Carolina. That's why I had to go to that one. I'm going to log in. We do integrate with single sign-on services. So whatever your standard uh, credentials are, you're just gonna enter your standard credentials that you use for everything else. The same would be true for the student. So I'm gonna log in. And that's it. That's how you log into the Vivi app. That's how you get to the app, choose your organization, and then log in. Now, once you log in, um, you will need to choose your room. Um, depending on how, um, I know that the, the Vivi units are brand new, so they haven't been set up yet on your campus. So once they, you may need to choose your specific building. And then once you choose your building, you can choose a room. Um, typically, Vivi units are named by room numbers. Um, but again, uh, they haven't quite been set up at UTC yet. So um, just stay tuned and it should be very obvious um, how you're how you're going to join your room. My room is room 226. So that's the room I'm going to join. One thing that you have the ability to do is you can favorite rooms. So if there are a handful of rooms that you um, always teach in or students always go to, you can select the little star next to the room and it'll make it a favorite and it'll, it will default to the top of the list. So I'm going to jo join room 226. I'm in my room and I'm going to select present my screen. And now as an instructor, I have the ability to present my screen. 
So now I'm presenting to my front of class display. Students can also present. So this is my teacher app. I can pause my screen at any time. So if I needed to pause the content on the screen, but I needed to take attendance, I could actually take attendance. Um, I could pull up any other applications, but it pauses the content for the students. Um, the other thing that you can do, so I'm going to go back to presenting my screen, you can stop your sharing at any time just by hitting stop, and that stops your sharing. Now, by default, if students would like to um, share content from their student devices to the front of class display, Students have to go through the same process. They, they need the Vivi app, they log in using their standard credentials, and then they're going to have to join the room. So this is my student app here, and we're gonna join room 226. So now um, I have a student in the room, and in fact, as a teacher or as an instructor, you can select give student control and you'll see all of the students in your classroom. So I can see that Bella and Dylan are in my classroom right now. You'll notice that the teacher app is slightly different than the student app. Um, students have less uh, options and most items are grayed out and that is by design. Vivi realizes that um, teachers and instructors would like to be in control of their classroom. So students have to request control to use the majority of the tools here. So if a student requests control, you will see a virtual hand raise where it says give students control. You select give students control and I can see that Dylan requested control but Bella is also connected to the classroom. If I wanted to give Dylan control, I select Dylan's name and now Dylan is presenting content to the front of class display. So a great way for class discussions, um, to share work that they may have created, uh, but the teacher is always in control. So at any point, a teacher can select stop and the teacher takes over control. A teacher could also select present my screen and automatically take over control from a student device. So that is how to present a screen and then that's how students request control and then a teacher gives students control. Um, one common question is, can a student who might be three classes down the hallway still join my room? They could, but because by default you have to request control, you're going to see who's connected to your classroom um, and you, you don't need to give them control. So that is by design, um, students uh, will need to request control. Now, another tool that we have is split screen. And so as a teacher, I'm going to stop sharing here and I'm going to go to room. And room for um, the instructor side of things gives you some options here. Uh, but one thing that is really nice is you have the option to turn split screen on. And it's really quadrants, it's four quadrants. So the instructor can present content and three students can present content at one time. This would be great uh, for comparing and contrasting or see different ways that um, different students may have solved a problem or uh, created something. So I'm gonna turn split screen on and I'm gonna go back to my main Vivi app here. And so I'm gonna have Dylan request control again and I'm gonna give Dylan control. And now because I turned split screen on, I could choose where I want Dylan to present. So let's say I want Dylan to present in the bottom right and you can see Dylan is presenting in the bottom right and perhaps I'll present in the top right. And so now Dylan is presenting in the top right and I'm, or excuse me, I'm presenting in the top right and Dylan is, Dylan is presenting in the um, bottom right. And I can ask two more students who, if they wanna share and pull their screens up as well. So it's a great tool for, like I said, looking at um, multiple students work at the same time and allowing students to share content. As always, at any time, teacher is in control. You select stop, you can select, select all, 
and that will stop everyone from sharing. All right, that's, a, um, that's how you actually share content from a teacher or instructor device and students can share content from their devices. Uh, there's more that we can do and we'll keep on rolling through that, but I'm gonna go ahead and pause um, just to see if any questions have come in. I'm not seeing any questions. Oh, there's one. If a faculty is doing a live stream or recording the lecture, can this be set as an input in Cultura virtual classroom or would they need to share full screen for their recording? Okay, so there's a couple of options here. Um, let me make sure I understand the question. So live stream, so let's go ahead and talk about that now. So there's a, a few things that you can do. If someone is doing a live stream, typically live streams uh, have a URL associated with it. Um, so one thing that you can do, uh, if you have a URL, you can go to play video direct. So if you have students in the classroom with you, you can actually uh, go to play video direct. I'm just gonna grab a URL here. This works with um, any sort of video that you have. Uh, this is a, a YouTube video that I'm gonna grab. You can paste the video link in there and hit play video, and it will actually stream the video directly from the Vivi box onto the front of class display, um, which is a much stronger stream. Uh, and so the students, if they're, physically in the classroom, they can watch the video on the main screen. And um, that would also work for live stream. So if you had a live stream, you could pop the URL in there and it would play it automatically. Now, um, the other option that you have, uh, so that would be if students are physically present in the classroom, you can pop a live stream in there. If you have a remote learning situation or a hybrid model where some students are physically in the room and some students are calling in, you can use whatever tools that you have alongside of Vivi. So if I am in the classroom and I am teaching with students, some students in the classroom, but some students are dialing in. So right now I'm using, um, I'm using Zoom. So whatever third party application you're using, they just have to join the Zoom meeting, and I can present my screen to the students who are physically in the classroom, and then they can join the Zoom meeting. Other students who are remote can join the Zoom meeting or whatever third-party application you're using, and they can also join that meeting. That would also work if you have students who might be in one classroom, um, and due to social distancing, you have students in another classroom, and the teacher is going to um, do use Zoom or whatever live streaming um, tools that they have. You can also present to two separate rooms. And let me go ahead and show you how to do that. So I'm gonna stop my sharing real quick and I'm gonna go back to rooms. So let's say um, I'm physically in room 226 with a certain number of students. And then I have some students down the hall also in the multi-purpose room, but I'm teaching the same content to both classes. One thing that you can do is you can combine rooms. Um, it looks to me like you make sure combine rooms is on. Uh, so, for some reason, it's not showing up for me here, but there is, there should be a little um, link button, and perhaps it's because my settings are off, so my settings may have changed. Let me turn, okay, split screens off, room code is off. <laughs> I just did this last week. All right, one thing that you can do is you can actually combine rooms. There'll be a little link where you can join a room and then add that to another room and um, show the same content. So if I have students in two separate rooms, I can join the rooms. So whatever I'm presenting on my screen will go to all rooms. But if you need to have a Zoom meeting or any other application, you can also um, present to both rooms so they can hear it. So that is an option as well. All right, just gonna go check for any more questions that have come in. All right, I don't see any more questions. 
So we will keep rolling. So the answer to that question in a, in a broader sense is yes, use Zoom, use, uh, there was another application you mentioned in that question, use all of those applications. But if you actually have students physically in the classroom, you can also share, present your screen so the students physically in the classroom can see it or physically in multiple classrooms if you choose to combine the rooms like that. All right, so um, you've seen how to present content, um, how to play video. So you saw me um, with Play Video Direct, I just pasted the URL in there, which would also work for live stream. You can also add video. So if you have multiple videos that the students are going to watch, so let me grab another video, and these are just National Geographic videos from YouTube. I'm going to copy these links and you can add multiple videos and they'll pay, they'll play consecutively so without pausing they'll just play one right after the other so I can add as many videos as I want I can select play cue it plays directly on the front of class display if it's YouTube it strips out all of the ads so it's a very clean playback coming directly from the Vivi box um, so that is um, actually play video direct and there's little tools up here so you can pause, stop, um, go back to present my screen at any time. Another tool that I wanna share with you is the annotate tool. This is great for engaging students in the classroom. Um, students actually have the ability to take a screenshot or use a whiteboard um, or even bring in a background image. So let me show you how this would look in the classroom. I'm just gonna pull up a map, uh, nothing more than an image. So let's say I wanted the students to trace, um, you know, trade routes, or I wanted them to um, identify something on a map. I can just pull the content up. Let me pull that back up again. Sorry about that. I pull that content up. And then students or the teacher always have annotate available. And what annotate will do, it was it will actually take a screenshot or allow you to take a screenshot as long as I'm presenting the content. Let me present my screen. There we go. So as a teacher, I can put content up on the front of class display. I'm in the wrong classroom. So that is my problem. That's why it's not presenting on my screen there. Room 226. Now I hit present my screen. There we go. All right, now it's presenting. So um, students can hit annotate, screenshot. It will take a screenshot of whatever content is on the front of class display. And there's some tools at the bottom. There's an eraser, a pencil, a text tool. And so students could actually um, annotate right on top of this content. So if I needed to draw you know, trade routes, I could do that with the pencil tool or if they students only have um, a uh, without a touch screen if they only have um, a keyboard they could use the text tool and they can type in the um, whatever we've asked them to identify so it's basically turning um, the image into digital content for students to manipulate students can save it to their device or they could save it straight to the cloud. So in the upper right hand corner, save to cloud, and depending on what you use, it can save straight to Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive, or Microsoft OneNote. So let's say I, I, as a student, I annotated on top of this, I can save it directly to Google Drive as long as I'm logged in. And when I go up to my Google Drive, it'll be there waiting for me. So it's just creating digital content essentially. Another tool that I want to show you here in Annotate is called Whiteboard. And uh, the whiteboard is exactly as it sounds. It is a blank space for teachers and students to annotate. Uh, so often uh, teachers or instructors will say, and even students, I just need a blank space to work, work something out. So um, an instructor could put, I'm going to do some easy math here. They could put a, an equation on there. Students could use the whiteboard to solve the equation. Um, but I can take it a step further. I can actually engage my students because at the top of the whiteboard is something called start feedback. And it's essentially turning the student devices into response systems. 
So let's say I want the students to solve for X. Um, as the instructor, I have to choose what type of assessment. So you've got multiple choice, true, false, yes, no, and preform. Preform is alphanumeric, uh, up to a thousand characters. So I'm gonna choose freeform. I'm gonna start the feedback session. And as soon as I start the feedback session, all students within their Vivi app who are logged into the room can actually enter a response. So X equals three. And they can send the response. And as a, I'm gonna answer on my Chromebook here, so I have a student Chromebook as well, X equals four, hit respond. And as the instructor, I see the student responses immediately. So it paused the content on the front of class display so they see the equation. But as an instructor, I can see the students' answers as they're coming in. So that <clears throat> is a really nice feature. And all of that data is saved to Vivi Central, which is that cloud-based portal. So as an instructor, this gives me an idea if students understand or uh, maybe students who might need a little more assistance, um, but I don't have time in class to analyze that data, all of that data is saved to the cloud um, without it, the instructor having to do anything else. So I'm gonna end that feedback session and confirm. And so that is the whiteboard. So that's under annotate and it's available for both instructors and students. Okay, I see that some questions have come in. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause. If you've shared the URL for students, which sounds great for students in the back of a large classroom, and you share a video, can you mute their computer or will you need to ask them to mute so the video audio isn't blaring multiple sources? Okay, so that's a really good question. Um, it is very helpful um, for students in the back of a large room. So with Play Video Direct, um, and there's a caveat to this, so hang on with me. With Play Video Direct, it is going to play on the front of class display. So um, it is going to play on your uh, screen, whatever screen you have in the front of classroom. And the audio would come from whatever audio is in the classroom. So if, it, if you have you know, built-in speakers, it will play from there. If you wanted to send this to students so they have it on their own devices, you can do that as well though. So I'm gonna, um, I'm going to stop this. So it was playing on my front of class display, but if you want to send it to students, share a link. You can send them any URL. Um, so I just pasted that, that URL into share link and hit send, and it sends that link to all students in the classroom. So they simply, this is a student app, they simply click on that link and it takes them directly to that URL. Now, they would have to control the audio on their computer. So you're not gonna be able to mute individual student devices if you chose to do that. So um, if they have headphones, uh, whatever it is they have, um, you would, they would have to mute it themselves. So there's, there's two options there, playing on the front of class display, on the audio in the classroom, or sending it directly to student devices. When you send it directly to student devices, um, again, they just have to click on that link, which is really efficient. Right. Let's say you had a Google Doc and you wanted all students to join you in that Google Doc. Um, Google URLs have become extremely long and complicated. So this is a really efficient way to get everybody on the same page quickly, um, as opposed to saying, okay, go find it here, go click here, go to this folder. You could just send the link directly to them. Um, when you're finished with the link, if you hit the X, it'll automatically take that link away. So that should answer the question about the, the video. Can you share feedback live? Yes. And I will, uh, I will address that in a moment. If the course being taught is a complete remote environment, both teachers and students are tuned in virtually, would there need to be virtual room set up? couple ways you can control that. Um, if students are on campus, um, but dialing in remotely, uh, you could still use these tools. You just have to all be on the same network. So that's if they're on campus, so perhaps they're in a dorm. 
if they are not on campus and dialing in remotely. Um, there's no concept of virtual rooms, but you could share content with students. And that is called Vivi Classmate. So I'm going to address that as well. So um, let me go ahead and address the feedback question that just came in. So feedback. You saw me use the feedback in annotate and whiteboard, but you can use the feedback at any time. So there's different templates. Again, multiple choice, true, false, yes, no, free form. We also have well-being checks. So, you know, just how do you feel today? That's a great question to ask in a classroom. You know, how do you feel today? Um, so it's emoji based. It's speaking their language, regardless of how old they are. Start feedback. And so the students will receive the emojis in their app. Um, so this is a great way to, to get a feel for, you know, how students are feeling. Um, obviously, if students are stressed or sick, or tired or hungry, it's gonna impact their learning. So I can see all of that information live. But the other thing that you can do, um, cause you asked, can you, can you see the information live and discuss it? The, the answer is yes. Um, and actually it's a great teaching tool to have. So I'm gonna exit. I'm actually gonna pull up a PowerPoint. The great thing about the feedback tool is you don't have to have anything pre-prepared, but if you do, um, you can use it right alongside of Vivi. So this is nothing more than a PowerPoint presentation with a question and multiple choice options. I can pull Vivi up right alongside of this. So um, is Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven about lost love? How much do you agree or disagree? I'm going to start a feedback session. So this would be multiple choice alphabetical. A through E. So you have the ability to um, use the slide bar to choose the number of options you have. You could select a correct answer, but with this question, actually it's based on opinion, so there's no correct answer. I'm going to start the feedback session, and I'm going to shrink this window down so you can see what the students see. So this is my student app. So this student's going to say A, this student's going to say C, and then I've got three computers here logged in as students. So really nice tool here is that I can share this with my students. So I can um, go back to full screen and I can actually share this with my students and we can talk about it. I could say, okay, Dylan, you said A, why did you say A? Um, Stephen uh, said C. Stephen, why did you say C? C? I could even pair students up with differing um, responses uh, and say, you've got two minutes to discuss this with your partner. Discuss and let's see if you can convince your partner to think the way you do. And then we could reconvene and then we can, um, you know, revote uh, or, or repoll to see if students' opinions change. So, yes, you can absolutely share this, um, these answers with students. Just share your screen. And um, it's a great point of discussion um, in the classroom. All right, let me exit this. Excellent question. And then the remote environment piece. So I do believe that we've gone through um, the different tools in here for um, how you would share content in a classroom. Um, even if your classrooms are split up, um, you can still share content in the classroom. One thing I wanna show you now is um, if you're in a straight remote learning environment, um and students aren't on campus how that would look so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to um vivi central which is admin.vivi.io so if you ever want to retrieve those feedback um results this is where you're going to go and this is where you can also go to set up um a remote learning tool so I'm gonna log in as a teacher. And you're gonna use your standard credentials. So whatever your standard credentials are, and I'm gonna join Vivi School Southeast. When you log into Vivi Central, you'll see feedback, which is where you could go to retrieve any feedback or any of the results from questions you've asked or polls you've taken in the classroom. They'll all just be right here and you can filter them. 
But Divi Classmate is our remote learning tool. And what this allows you to do is essentially take any resources that you need to use to, to, to teach a lesson and bring them all in one place using Divi. So um, you have to create a class list first. So uh, I've already created them. So let's say Earth Science. I can, um, you can just add your students' names in there. So um, let me add. So you just copy and paste their email addresses. Let me add a few students in here. So it would just be a matter of copying and pasting your students' names in there. I'm gonna add students. So there they are. And then I'm going to go up to Vivi Classmate and I'm gonna create a lesson. Essentially, you're just adding um, your resources for students to access in one location. So I'm gonna call this lesson Oceans. I can schedule the date for today. Uh, the time is just a suggested time. So we could do 9 a.m. today. Hit next. You select the class. So this is going to be my earth science class. And then you simply add tasks. So let's say the first task I want them to do is view this video. And I'm gonna add a link. So let me bounce out. Okay, here's an oceans video that I want them to view, paste, add another task. Complete this Google form. So I'm just gonna bounce out and grab that URL to a Google form that I have. Copy it, paste it. And then last, let's say I want them to join a Zoom meeting. So they're gonna do some work ahead of time. They're gonna do these two things and then they're gonna join the Zoom meeting and then you just add that link. And I'm just going to make up um, and then you hit next. This is your lesson. So I want the students to do task one and task two and then join the Zoom meeting. Save lesson. And so now um, the students should have this waiting for them in their Vivi app. So when the students log on, let me pull the student up here. So when they're off campus, um, or if they're on campus, you can use this wherever you are, um, remote, in class, it doesn't matter. They just have to open their Vivi app and they would obviously need Wi-Fi access. Um, now you have rooms, but now students also have lessons. So if, if uh, an instructor has sent them a lesson, um, they would have a lesson sitting in there. So let me see, there's, there's a lesson from last week. Um, so mine hasn't uploaded just yet, but Oceans and continents, join the Google Hangout, view this video, complete this quiz. So there's the video, it takes them directly there. And that's how you can send content to students who may be remote. Um, and it, it's nice because it just kind of keeps everybody on the same page. So if you have some students remote, some students in class, you can send this, uh, these lessons to students who are remote and they can kind of follow along in the class and have all of those resources while you are physically in class showing them the video and then having the, them complete this. So it just brings everything together. So regardless of where students are learning, it kind of keeps um, everybody on task. So that's how you can address that remote learning environment. All right. Um, so that, um, that should answer that kind of remote room. It's not really a remote room. Um, it's just providing the students with lessons to follow. So if they are remote and a teacher's in the class, they can just 
click here, click here, click here, and kind of follow along. An easy way to send it to students. All right, looks like we've had another one. But this wouldn't be required if we have our LMS system Canvas in our case. You are correct. Um, so if you're using Canvas, Canvas does the same type of thing. So if you're using Canvas, go for it. Yeah, um, it does something very similar. So it just depends on what you're comfortable with. But the options there in Divi if you want to use it. But yeah, most um, most schools who are using LMSs have a tendency to continue using those LMSs in the remote environment. All right, looks like we've answered all of those questions. Okay. I'm just checking to make sure no other questions have come in. Doesn't look like it. So I just want to make sure that we've covered everything here. Um, so let me just pull up my Vivi app. Okay, so you've seen how to join a room. You have seen how to share. Um, and that really kind of covers everything um, from a, you know, Vivi introductory standpoint. It's all about sharing content and engaging students um, in that content and allowing students to share from their devices as well. One thing that is important to note, um, because in, in higher ed, there's lots of different situations where you may um, want students to share content openly. So let's say you don't want them to raise their hand. Um, you just want them to be able to openly share. As an instructor, instructors can go to room, and that's where we had split screen, but you can actually turn a room code on which puts a little code in the bottom of the, of the front of class display, but you can turn open access on. And open access means students can openly share. So perhaps the students are working on a collaborative activity where you want them to just share without having to continue that virtual hand raise. You can turn open access on, and then students would have the ability to just simply share um, without having to request control. So, um, that's an important tool to note um, because there are different learning situations um, in those higher ed environments. And so just know under room that the instructor has the ability to turn open access on. It is off by default. Um, and I'm going to follow up with some additional training videos that specifically address open access, combining rooms, and things like that. So you can um, have those very specific resources on hand as well. All right, let me check for some more questions. Thank you for sending this in. All right. Um, can you structure the locations based on buildings? Yes, um, you absolutely can, and we suggest it. So um, when you are setting up your Vivi unit, um, you're, you can set up a building, and then within the building, you can have the different room numbers. Um, and if you need help with that, we have a solutions engineer that can help you set that up and navigate that. So, um, yeah, if you've got multiple buildings, we suggest building and then putting those rooms in that building. All right, excellent questions, guys. Um, awesome. So we're, uh, we're at that 45 minute mark, so I like to stick to my time frame. But one thing I wanted to let you know is that I am a resource to you. So if there are additional resources you need to share with um, either instructors or students or even the IT side of the house, please feel free to reach out to me, Catherine at Vivi.io. We're happy to help. We're happy to provide additional professional development, um, happy to field any questions that you have. So just know that we're here for you um, and uh, we would love to provide you with anything, uh, any additional resources or training that you need. I'm going to check the chat one more time. It looks like we're good to go. So again, thank you for your time today. Uh, I'll be sure to follow up uh, with Marcus with some additional resources. And um, thank you for, you for what you do always. So um, stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye.